Hi, my name is Elena Zavala, and I'm a PhD student at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology. In this study, we wanted to test if it was possible to reconstruct the occupational history of a site by just using DNA from sediments. In order to investigate this question, we decided to do this at Denisova Cave because Neanderthal remains have been discovered there, as well as Denisovan remains. And in addition, there was a discovery of a bone fragment called Denisova 11, which is the offspring of a Neanderthal mother and Denisovan father. This brought up questions as to what is the occupational history of the site. Denisova Cave is located in the Altai Mountains of Siberia in Russia and consists of three separate chambers, the main, east, and south. Excavations at the site have been ongoing for over 40 years, revealing a rich archaeological record spanning over 300,000 years covering the Holocene and four archaeological assemblages of the Pleistocene. Despite the large time span and recovering tens of thousands of bones, less than 15 skeletal remains have been found, preventing the association of these different hominid groups with recovered artifacts. One particular area of interest is the initial Upper Paleolithic assemblage, which starts from approximately 45,000 years ago and where jewelry and pendants have been found, as shown here, the discovery of two Denisovan remains in these layers and no modern humans has sparked a debate as to who were the creators of these artifacts. For this study, we teamed up with Maxim Kozlikin, Michael Shimkov, and Anatoly Derevienko, who have led excavations at Denisova Cave, as well as Bert Roberts and Zenobia Jacobs, who have worked to establish the chronology of the site. They collected 728 sediment samples in a grid-like pattern in all three chambers of the cave and across all Pleistocene layers, making this the single biggest study of sediment DNA conducted to date. We then extracted DNA from each sample and converted them into libraries, which allows the DNA to be sequenced. The library from each sample was then enriched separately for each mammalian and specifically human mitochondrial DNA. We were excited to find that about 25% of the samples contained evidence for ancient hominid mitochondrial DNA as shown by the purple dots in both middle Paleolithic layers and initial upper Paleolithic layers in dark orange. From these samples, the Nisevans, shown by the red circles here, were the first group detected in the early middle Paleolithic layers Neanderthals and Denisovans in red and blue in the middle middle Paleolithic layers, and finally humans in yellow, appearing in the initial upper Paleolithic layers. This last find was of special interest as it is the first evidence of modern humans at Denisova Cave. Understanding the occupational histories of different hominin groups in relationship to different archaeological periods is just one piece of the puzzle. We also wanted to try and identify what was the occupation of different faunal groups. When we looked at the relative abundance of different families within each sample, we noticed a shift that occurred from predominantly bear and canid DNA to bovid and hyena DNA when moving forward in time, as shown here in the shift from greens to browns. Finally, we took all of this new information and put it together. A previous study dated the layers of the main and east chamber, and we merged these dates onto a time common time scale. The white gaps in the timeline represent missing parts of the sediment sequence. We then compared when the different hominin groups were present in the cave. Denise events first appeared at about 250,000 years ago. We also found that Denisovan groups changed through time. One group before 130,000 years ago to another group after 80,000 years ago. Neanderthals first appeared about 200,000 years ago and ancient modern humans first appeared at the same time as initial upper Paleolithic artifacts. We also observed shifts in the types of bears that lived in the cave, from cave bears to brown bears, and the types of cave hyenas. What stands out is that the first major turnover in bears and hyenas and first appearance of Neanderthals happened at the same time as a shift from relatively warm to cold conditions around 190,000 years ago. Another shift happened about 60,000 years later near the start of the relatively warm last interglacial, when the earlier Denisovan group disappears and the hyena type changes again. We don't know what causes all these changes to take place, but our study shows how high density profiling with sediment DNA can be used to understand both human evolutionary history 
and its relationship to paleoecology. Thank you for your interest in our study and please check out our paper here for more details.